I hope you guys are all okay and all good. Welcome to another video. My name is George. For those of you who don't know, feel free to subscribe down below if you're not already. And this is my first ever attempt at a reading vlog. Oh! So these days, all the cool kids are doing reading vlogs. And I've watched a few. They look really amazing. Like some of the ones that I've watched, I've really, really enjoyed. So yeah, I've seen some reading vlogs. I really liked them. I wanted to try one. Um, and I've really enjoyed doing it actually, so I think I'm going to be doing more of these. Um, I hope it's something that you're interested in, otherwise this is a waste of all of our time. But um, <laughs> I really enjoyed doing it because it meant that I could sort of record my thoughts as I went. Like, I did watch Christina Riccio's video of where she was sort of laying into reading vlogs a little bit and how much she doesn't like them the day before she did one. Confusion. Um, not going to get into that. That's booktube drama. This isn't a drama channel. But um, I did see that and I was a bit like weirded out by it. Anyhow, but I quite, I kind of like recording my thoughts as I go along. It's kind of nice, especially because they change. Like, you come to the end of a book and you review it and you kind of review it in like a haze of the book finishings. You kind of review it in that haze of the book being over and what that book meant to you and how it's affected you, but mostly how the ending has affected you, I guess. Whereas with this, it's sort of like you get to see everything and think about everything all at once and everything all at once. Stephen Camden, really good book. If you've not read it, it's fucking amazing. It's like poetry, it's great. But it's sort of all of the things and all the things that you're feeling um, kind of in a row. And it means that you're kind of analyzing it as you go rather than like sitting and reading and then kind of thinking about it in retrospect. So I kind of found that interesting. It was an interesting experience for me to read a book in such a way. I don't think I'll do it for everything I read because I think I would get confused with the amount of videos I have to put out and whatnot. Um, but I'll do it. I'll, if you like this, I'll keep doing it. But um, I was reading Star Wars Aftermath by Chuck Wendig, which is um, a book set in the Star Wars universe between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. It is the first in a trilogy that is published by Arrow in the UK. Um, and I listened to the audiobook, which is read by Mark Thompson. Um, and I will tell you all of my thoughts of this uh, after the jump. So uh, enjoy the rest of this reading vlog. Um, and I will see you in like 20 minutes or so. And uh, we'll talk about my little review section of the book. So yeah. Okay, so in theory, um, I will have done like an intro part of this video. So what you're seeing now is past George uh, talking about his experience of reading Aftermath uh, by Chuck Wendig, um, which is a Star Wars novel. Um, I started listening to it this morning. Um, I, I've i mentioned this in a previous video, I think, um, but I, I run more than I used to. Um, and running further means that music doesn't quite cut it. So because I'm running further, um, I'll listen to an audiobook instead. So the audio, and because, and I did that with Naturally Tan by Tan France. I did it with Dare of a Drag Queen by Krista Rasmussen. Um, and this morning I did it with, um, Star Wars Aftermath by Chuck Wendig. I'm really enjoying it so far. Like it's, um, it's not what I expected. The production value on this audiobook is so freaking high. Like I cannot cope. Um, it even opens with like the, um, the Star Wars theme. What did I want to call it? I feel like I wanted to call it like an overture. Obviously in a musical theatre place right now. Um, but I, it started with the Star Wars theme, which I wasn't expecting. And there's like music and sound effects throughout, um, so, which makes it really exciting and really interesting to read because it's like a very immersive experience. So that's good. Um, the reader is a guy called Mark Thompson, who is doing an incredible job. Like he's great at the different voices and he's great on putting like emphasis on particular things. Um, the way that it's being read and the way that it's, the way that it's being written, sorry, um, is in first person present. So everything is very immediate. Um, you're being introduced to people very, very quickly. Um, and things are moving, are like rattling along. Um, so because of that, everything feels really immediate and the music helps to be immersive. And the fact that he is, he's not just reading the book. He's a voice actor. So he's sort of, acting out the narration in a way, I guess. Um, and the dialogue is really well acted as well. It's really interesting. I'm really enjoying it so far. We've been introduced to, I think, three characters and three storylines that are all going to converge. Um, the story itself, I feel like I should have said, um, is the first in like a set of books, a trilogy from Chuck Wendig, which is Aftermath, Aftermath Life Debt and Aftermath Empire's End, which are set between the end of Return of the Jedi and the beginning of The Force Awakens. And there are two other books in there as well, which are Phasma, um, which is about Captain Phasma, um, and Bloodline, which is about Princess Leia, I believe. Um, and 
this sort of tracks the fall of the Empire, um, like after the destruction of the second Death Star and kind of what happens in between times. Um, and I guess what happens in the build up to the world that we have and are presented within The Force Awakens, which is obviously a very different world to the one that Return of the Jedi ends with, because the Return of the Jedi ends with like quite a huge amount of celebration. Um, and this obviously is... And The Force Awakens is a bit more unstable because of the First Order and things like that. So, yeah, basically I'm really enjoying it so far. I think it's really interesting. Um, we've been introduced to three sets of characters uh, that I think are the three stories that we're going to be following and they'll all converge at some point. Um, you're in a lot of characters' heads at once, so it jumps around quite a lot. But again, um, what I already said, that it's quite immediate and quite immersive, so it's quite good. Like, So I'm like an hour in, so I'm not that far into it. It's like a 12-hour audiobook, um, so I'm not that far in at this point. But I am enjoying it so far. It's moving very, very quickly. So a lot's going to happen in the next, like, 11 hours. <laughs> yeah, good so far. More as we get it. So I went to the gym this morning, which is why you can see, like, funny little rings around my eyes, because I didn't run. Um, I went for a swim. Um, so goggle marks. Yay. So uh, I didn't listen to anything while I was at the gym, but when I left the gym, I had to do some shopping. So I went and did that shopping while listening to uh, the audiobook. And... There was a moment where I was thinking, oh god, new, more new characters, like a lot of people were being introduced all at once. Um, but then it went back to people that I was familiar with and then it sort of felt like it was alright again and it's sort of revealing a bit more about the plot now. I'm about two and a half hours in at this point and I still really like it. It's still really pacey and everything's kind of moving along really quickly. Um, there's characters that I'm starting to recognise as well. Mon Mothma's been mentioned. Um, Wedge Antilles is one of the main characters in this as well, um, or he appears to be at this point. Um, yeah, I'm really enjoying it so far. It's very, very pacey. Um, I think when more characters are being introduced, I was starting to get worried that I wasn't going to remember who everyone was, um, and that I was going to struggle connecting to all of them in some way. Um, but actually it's alright, because it, the chapters are sh so short and it's jumping between different people. So when, so it was just, I think I just came in at a point where, like, an, one more character was being introduced, so it kind of threw me a little bit, because I'd kind of accepted who my people were. But now it looks like I know now, in a way. I don't know. Um, yeah, but about nine and a half hours on it to go. So yeah. So it's Monday morning. I've not done anything on here for a while now. Um, well, it's been a few days because I was off with Jordan. We had a wonderful weekend um, where I didn't listen to any audiobooks. So I'm about to go to the gym. I'm on my way to the gym. I'm gonna run outside and listen to my audiobook as I go. And then, yeah, I'll report back. <laughs> so that failed for a multitude of reasons. Actually, not a multitude. Um, the run was fine. Um, I'm not a huge fan of running outdoors because it's harder. So it was a really hard run. Um, it was five and a half K or thereabouts. I was sort of running on like a random route. You don't care about that. You're here for the reading vlog. Um, but the only problem was uh, I used Map My Run, which is an Under Armour app it like tells you what you're doing as you go so as <laughs> got to the end of a chapter and it was very exciting and then suddenly she starts talking like the woman on the Under Armour app is like here is how far you've gone and this was your split time and this is your average time in like per kilometer and it was like oh well now I've missed like 30 seconds of this chapter so I switched to music so I'll keep listening now, I guess. Ugh. So I have listened to more of it um, on my way back from the gym and on my way around while I was doing some shopping and stuff. And oh, at least get yourself in shot if you're going to do this, okay? Uh, <laughs> so I've listened to more of it. Um, there's not really much else to say apart from like I am enjoying it and it's moving along at quite a pace. We're kind of the focus has kind of shifted to just one set of characters in it for a little for the last half an hour or so. Um, the focus seems to be there. And that's kind of developing quite quickly. I don't know. I am enjoying it. I think... I, I want to spend more time with characters so I can get to know them a bit more. I think I'm used to books that are more either single or dual perspective, so I'm not having to get to know so many people. And maybe what this really is is, is, is a sign that maybe I shouldn't read Game of Thrones, although I do want to. I mean, I do have them on my shelf ready for me to read them. But yes, I am enjoying it. Um, I wish there was more detail and there is, I, I love a pacey book, I love a pacey read, um, but there is that bit of me that wishes it'd slow down a touch so I can get to know people a bit better. I don't know, it's a weird criticism to have because usually I'm not bothered about 
something being really, really pacey, but I wonder if this is pacey maybe the wrong way for me? And I know that a lot of people really enjoyed it, and I am enjoying it, and I'm enjoying kind of the Star Wars universe and um, reading stuff that's beyond the films. I think that's really interesting to me. But I do wonder whether I need a bit more, like, character depth and more, like, emotion rather than, like, what's happening. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I am enjoying it, though. That's the thing. I'm enjoying it. I think I just want more detail. And maybe I'll get that. I'm at, like, four hours or so now. So, yeah. Ooh, don't look at my washing. Um, <laughs> um, I've done a lot of audiobook listening today um, because I keep on going and walking places. I had to go out and I, I went out and I did some work in a Starbucks for a little while, which was a walk into town. Um, then I was wandering around the shops for a little bit afterwards because I needed to buy stuff for dinner. Um, so I've done a lot more listening and I've only got like five hours left. Um, it does feel like it's worth mentioning at this point that I do... Um, listen to the audiobooks slightly faster. I don't listen to them at times one speed. I listen to them at 1.5, I think, because one is just too slow. There are some audiobooks that I've listened to at two times speed because they're just read really slowly. But um, this one I'm re listening to at uh, 1.5, um, which is why it might be like I'm getting through it quite quickly. Um, but also that I'm like walking around and going to places a lot. Um, yeah, it's exciting. Akbar's back in at this point. Um, there's a lot more going on. The plots have kind of finally come together and the characters that you're introduced to at the start have finally all kind of met each other almost. Um, with the exception of two of them, which is the main bad guy and a good guy. But like the people that you've been introduced to, like in the first third, um, at this point, at like the midway point um, or just past the midway point, they've now been in, they've now met each other and they've now been introduced to one another. So that's good for me in terms of my enjoyment because now they're all together at once and it's kind of, but now it's like hopping between their heads which I think might get confusing potentially um but we'll see I'm not saying that it will it just might but yeah still enjoying it um I sort of <laughs> I sort of wanted to come back and just like lie in my bed and listen to the, like the last bit of it um which is I mean at 1.5 speed it would take me about three hours so I, I won't have time to do that today but um I do want to just sit down and listen to the rest of it at this point because it's kind of building and building and building. So now I'm at the point where it's like, I, I want to know, know what happens. Um, so that's good. That's a good sign. Um, but yeah, it means that like this reading vlog won't be like hideously long, which is good, I think. I don't know how long a reading vlog is meant to be. I've watched a few. Some of them are like, I've watched a couple that were like 45 minutes to an hour long, which was like, oh my God, so long. Um, but also if that's the kind of content you're into, then by all means. But I've also seen some that are shorter, so. This one might be on the shorter side and be closer to like 20 minutes, especially when you've got through the part where like I ramble at the beginning and then I ramble at the end and tell you my overall thoughts. But yeah, five hours to go. Very, 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 very good book. Really enjoying it. Looking at the sequels on my shelf and thinking that I'm probably going to dive into them pretty much straight afterwards. And maybe I'll reading vlog those too. Who knows? Might be cute to have like the whole trilogy in like a little playlist or something. Especially if I read like um, Phasma and Bloodline as well, that could be cool to kind of have them all in like a little playlist. I don't know. I've not even finished the first book and I'm already planning ahead to the next four. Yeah, good times. So I definitely should have made an update about this earlier on today. Um, but the fact of the matter is I forgot. So um, earlier on, today after I went to the gym because I went to the gym this morning and around 5k I feel like this entire video is just going to show you how much I go to the gym and like how much I run nowadays but anyhow I went to the gym and I ran 5k no I went to the gym and I ran 5k outside again um which was fine um but you're not here for running updates you're here for a reading vlog um and then proceeded to listen to like another hour or so of aftermath um and it was really good it's all sort of coming to a head. It's all coming to, it's all like wrapping up. And like I said, in the previous bit of this, I just wanted to like sit down and listen to the last couple of hours of it because um, it's really exciting. Um, and so it's getting to that point where it's really exciting and that's all I want to do. Um, so that will probably happen at some point tomorrow. Tomorrow I imagine will be when I actually finish it. Um, Cause I'll likely go out and do some work in a coffee shop somewhere, which means I'll, be wandering somewhere with my headphones in um but yeah it's really good and just as I got in the house to like turn it off um and was about to kind of crack on with work um a very very 
very important character showed up and it was very exciting and I did a tiny squeal of excitement about it so that was good um yeah I'm fully invested I'm really enjoying it um I just see myself jumping straight into the next two if I'm entirely honest um because I'm going to want to know what happens after this so yeah but I'll probably finish it tomorrow which means then I can record the intro part and the like full reading wrap up experience part of it as well which means then it'll be one of my videos that goes up like week commencing the 9th of September it will go up on the Wednesday or the Friday that week look at me ahead on content never thought I'd see the day this is what happens when you're freelance and you have more time to think about it Okay, so I finished this today. It is Saturday the 7th of September um, and I finished this on my walk back from the train station. I went into town to hang out with a friend um, called Katie. Hello Katie if you're watching this. I love you much. Um, so I uh, finished it today uh, on my way back. I was listening to the audiobook which is read by Mark Thompson. Um, first things first, I'm the realist. I loved this audiobook so very much for a multitude of reasons. The first reason being the production value on this audiobook is absolutely insane. To be honest, I'd expect nothing less from Star Wars because it's Star Wars. There is budget. Um, but there was music. There was sound effects. Uh, Mark Thompson as a reader was incredible. He was so much more than just a reader of the book. He was fully a voice actor. And because it's written in first person present tense, which I have mentioned previously in this vlog, I believe, um, because it's written in first person present tense, which makes it so, so immediate. Um, and you're in multiple characters heads over the course of the book. Um, when something is happening to the character, Mark is voicing it which is so fascinating to hear as a listener. Um, it means it's more of a performance, it adds to the production, and I really, really enjoyed that aspect of it. I thought as a reader, Mark Thompson was absolutely tippity top. Um, and actually, because of how well he read it, and because of the production value of the audiobook, despite owning the two sequels in book format, there is a big part of me that wants to go and listen to the audiobooks of the next two, because he reads them, and he's so great like i'm sorely tempted to go onto audible not sponsored um and download them because i think he's done such a fantastic job of it that like the next two books would be so so satisfying um so there's that that's something i'm sort of contending with in my brain at the moment and whether or not i'm going to do that um i also sort of want to reading vlog them because this is like i've already said it's been a really fun process of like going through and listening to um, an audiobook in like pieces and then feeding back to a camera as I go because as you will have seen like there were moments when I didn't love it as much and there were moments when I really really got into it especially like the last third I loved the last third fiercely like it was so good um, but there were just parts in the middle where either the pace slowed or a new character was being introduced and it kind of threw me through a loop a little bit there were many many reasons that I loved this so okay so audiobook production value absolutely incredible um the introduction of the characters, it, it the, the story as itself is so immersive. And because of that, the introductions of all of the characters is so well done. Like every single one is introduced within the context of their own little world and their own, um, uh, oh God, where's my brain going? In the context of their own little world and like um, how that affects them and what that makes them like. Um, so you look at someone like Wedge Antilles, or you look at Nora, or you look at Temin, they're introduced within the context of their setting, and like in uh, the setting that is most familiar to them in a weird way, because then it kind of, it gives you that added little something that kind of makes it more interesting and makes it more, make, makes you feel more attached to them in a weird way. Um, so character introductions I loved. There were a lot of characters in this book. And right to the very end, more and more characters were being introduced. You weren't spending a huge amount of time with them, which did make it hard at points. Because um, there were some characters that got introduced for like an interlude or for like a moment in a chapter. And while that's fine, um, and I know that in Star Wars and in this trilogy, he is building like a grander part of the universe. So what we're getting is like more information. And no doubt these characters will pop up again in books two and three. So that's fine. But there was... There were definitely moments where I was thinking, God, more characters? I can barely remember the names of the ones that we already have, and I'm getting more. And that's the other thing, because the names are Star Wars-y names, um, I couldn't write any of them down for you. Because <laughs> I couldn't write down Wedge Antilles. I couldn't, I could write down Nora, and maybe I could write down Temin, but I'd be guessing. Um, but characters like Jax and 
Oh my god, I've completely forgotten one of the characters' names already. That's really terrible. But people like people like Jax, I couldn't write down. Ray Sloan, I could probably guess, but like there's characters that I couldn't write down the names of. Um, there were really good throwbacks in the book over the course of the novel. There are really good throwbacks to um, callbacks to things that you recognise as a Star Wars fan. So things, so obviously the whole book is about the fall of the Empire um, after the Return of the Jedi. And because of that, there's a lot of references to the Empire and to the Battle of the Death and the Battle of Endor and the stuff that happened on the second Death Star. Um, but there are other little things in there that are also really satisfying. Um, when Mon Mothma shows up, um, there's a moment when Han Solo shows up. There's mentions of Princess Leia and Luke. Um, and Admiral Akbar is in there as well. Um, and obviously, Wedge Antilles being a character, being like a, a a fairly important character over the course of the book, um, also is a nice callback and something that you can latch onto as a Star Wars fan. And also there's a mention of Jakku in there, really, really near the end. Um, which again, as this is something that is set between Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens and is about the fall of the Empire and kind of leads you up to the Force Awakens, um, a mention of Jakku is necessary and also interesting. Um, another thing on characters in this book, um, powerful women all over the place, Nora, Ray Sloan, um, Brilliant, br Jax, who is a bounty hunter, brilliant, brilliant characters. And I obviously I can't speak for it exactly because I'm not a woman, but as far as I was concerned, they were very well written women. And um, they were powerful and had agency and they were interesting characters um, and characters I really, really enjoyed spending time with. Um, openly queer characters in the Star Wars universe as well. Um, there were three that I counted. Um, and there was a mention of someone having two dads in there, I think, as well. Um, so there are openly queer characters in this book, which was done with such subtlety and such, like, nonchalance that, like, I sort of didn't... It, it took me a minute to kind of process it. Like, it was only when I stopped listening that I was like, oh, wait, they just mentioned that this character is gay or um, he has two aunts. And that kind of thing that just... It was really nice to kind of have something that... It wasn't an issue and it wasn't a big deal. It was just two... It was just queer characters in the Star Wars universe, which I really, really enjoyed. Um... Story-wise, it rattles along at quite a pace. Um, the It rattles along at a really good pace, for the most part. There are moments when it cuts to an interlude or it jumps to um, a story that you've not been with for a little while, um, and it does feel like the pace slows back a little bit, um, but it is necessary. Like, what the, what Chuck, is, Chuck seems to be doing is building the grander world of this trilogy um, and building us up towards The Force Awakens, but also... Um, having these uh, concurrent plot lines that are running all at once, some of which are solved in this book, some of which aren't. Um, but I really, but I, and I think for the most part I was fine with it, but there were definitely times when you would go from a story that you've been spending like a, quite a long chapter or a bunch of chapters with, and then suddenly it would jump to something else that you've not looked at for a while. And it's like, oh gosh, yes, that thing. And also, wait, hold on, what about this other thing? And it, it's to keep all the plot lines running at once. And I completely understand that. But there were moments where, I'd not forgotten about a plot line, but I was so focused on another one that another the an older one popped up and I was like, oh yes, this too. And the ending was great. I really loved the ending because... The other good thing about this book is that it seems to blur the lines between good and evil quite well. Like, there are people with different alliances and people who have had different experiences um, throughout um, the world that they've had, like, in A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. They've had their own lives in that, and that's obvious within these books, and the backgrounds of these characters, I feel, are well fleshed out. And because of that, it means that they all have their own alliances and their own feelings towards the New Republic, all formerly known as the Rebel Alliance, um, and the Empire. And because of these um, feelings that they already have towards these two things that are, like, the good and the evil, um, it's interesting to see people that are using that as a spectrum and people that are d in different places along that line. People who used to be um, Imperial that are now New Republic and people who are New Republic who are maybe drifting a little bit more towards the Imperial side or at the very least questioning um, how good the New Republic actually is and will be. Um, there was a really interesting moment where a character is talking about how the New Republic, um, how the Empire used to be like the Republic and how it kind of, how or how back how obviously in Revenge of the Sith um it turned out that the em um that the Republic was being controlled by the Emperor obviously with Palpatine being um the Emperor and how that was being controlled by him so what the people who they perceived were good ended up being the people that were evil and then the Rebel Alliance um obviously went through the whole of the Star Wars thing and at the end of the Return of the Jedi 
blew up the second Death Star and created the New Republic. And the interesting thing about that is what he was saying was, if the good people have been shown to be evil before, what's saying that it won't swap again? That we'll have, and there'll be a new New Republic or a new Rebel Alliance at some point that will have to fight back against um, a New Republic that has fallen prey to um, the same kinds of things that the Empire or the Imperials did before. Does that make any sort of sense? But it was interesting to kind of think about um, the good and evil in this world being more of a spectrum and less black and white, which I think is something that is shown up really well in The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. That's something that comes up really, really often. And it's quite interesting to kind of see that there's more than just the light and the dark. There is all of the things that are in between and all the different places that you cross over. And I think that is something that is also consistently shown um, from Luke and Anakin um, and Obi-Wan and other characters in the, in the um, films. Um, it's consistently shown that there is more than just, there is, there's more shades than just good, than just light and dark. There's all the shades in between and no one is completely one or the other. It's a complete spectrum of good and evil. And I think the blurring of the lines I think is interesting and it's fascinating as a reader to kind of have something like that. In many films and many books um, there's kind of the good and there's the evil and there's not really an in-between and it's kind of nice to have something that has that sort of full spectrum of like it could like you could fall anywhere on it like whether you lean more light or dark I guess it's almost like politics in a weird way whether you're more left or right. <laughs> um, but I really but to sum up, because I've just been rambling for the last like 11 and a half minutes, um, I really enjoyed this. I absolutely loved it. I think there were moments obviously where the pace dipped and I wasn't loving it quite as much. And there were moments when there were characters being introduced and I was like, oh God, another one, what the hell? Um, but for the most part, I loved this book. And it was so interesting. Um, I loved the little callbacks to the rest of the Star Wars series and the Star Wars franchise as a whole. And the call forwards, I guess, to like things like Jakku and what's going to be happening there. Um, but I loved it. I thought it was really interesting and really, really fun. Um, and I'm re I'm going to read the second one, either physically or as an audiobook. I can't decide. I will probably have decided by the time this video actually goes up. Um, but I super enjoyed it. I thought it was fantastic. Um, and it made me it's made me want to read more things in the Star Wars universe, which I think was the point. I think I was worried that I would read it and it just wouldn't be quite as exciting as watching a film. Um, but what he's set up is a cinematic, where he has a cinematic way of writing and an immediate way of writing, which means that it is accessible and exciting and runs at quite a pace, which I think is all you can really ask for from something that is based on a franchise that does that cinematically. It's based on a film franchise and films obviously have a habit of like being pacey and being exciting. And this was pacey and exciting in all the right ways. I think is what I'm trying to say. I loved it. And Mark Thompson is a great audiobook reader. So if you do want to uh, read or listen to this. I do. Re if you are an audiobook reader, um, the audiobook of this is fantastic for like voice acting and sound effects and music. It's so great. I loved it. Yeah, that's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this slightly longer reading vlog type situation. If you did, feel free to let me know down below and I will maybe do more of these. Um, Comment down below if you've read this um, or if you're a fan of the Star Wars universe. Let's start talking about Star Wars. Who is excited for the Rise of Skywalker? I know I am. Um, I love each and every one of your faces and I'll speak to you as soon as I possibly can. Bye!